Hi people, welcome back to the tutorial on how to hack Metasploitable 2. Today we're going to take advantage of the fact that both both 6667 and 6697 are open. Um, it appears to be an interrelay chat um, service running on those open ports um, using a version on real RICD. The question is, what is it? On real IRCD, it's an open source internet relay chat daemon originally based on Dreamforge. It's one of the oldest methods for people to chat. So you can connect to an internet relay chat server and join a, a specific um, chat room and you can chat with like-minded people. Um, you might be wondering whether this, that, that those things are still around today. I, I can tell you that uh, they're very much alive today. And uh, according to statistics from the irisistat.org, um, on real RICD is still the most deployed RSC server with nearly 40% of the market share. Um, the good thing about on real RICD is, is that it has a lot of countermeasures against floods and other security attacks. When, I talk, I'm talking, when I'm referring to floods here, I'm talking about distributing other services. The story about this vulnerability goes like this. In 2009, the mirrors of the source distribution of version 3281 that we're going to be looking into of Unreal RICD were replaced with a version that contained a backdoor. And amazingly, it took nearly seven months for the, for the swap to be noticed. So I, anybody who picked up a copy of the code in that seven month period was, was vulnerable um, to, that, um, to, that, to, to, that, to that backdoor. Um, the backdoor was disguised to look at, at, like a debug statement in the code. Um, thank God, um, all versions of that, um, particularly on real ICD, have not been retired. As always, our methodology um, remains the same here as we're going to use the Metasploit framework to take advantage of the of this service on the on the open port. Um, you, we can first confirm that um, these indeed are. Uh, the internet relay chat running on both 667 and 6697. And uh, next thing is, um, before we, op we open Metasploit, is to make sure that you've got your PostgreSQL service um, up and running. As you can see by the status here, it's active. And, and then the, the next thing is you tap MSF console, and then it's gonna bring up uh, the Metasploit shell. Um, first thing we've got to do now is to search for that vulnerability. Um, so if you search for Unreal, right, we can actually see that um, we've got um, three types and three modules uh, matching our search. The one that we're going to be using is the second one, um, the Unreal RICD um, 3281 backdoor. So if we use that, okay, and then find out what the options are for configuration. Right, um, okay, we've got to configure the remote host, which is the IP address of a vulnerable machine here. So, um, But the thing about this exploit is it doesn't appear to have a payload built into it, so we might have to configure it. But before we do that, let's find out what the options are for a payload. Right, we've got quite a few payloads to choose from. Uh, you might have to experiment with um, um, any one of those. Um, some might not give you the, the highest level of privilege, but I'm going to be using the one that gives us the highest privilege because um, I just want to make sure that the tutorial is exciting. So we're going to be um, to set the payloads to the bind Ruby one. So, and then Let's find out what our options are again in terms of configuring this exploit. Right, so um, we've got everything in place. So um, yes, so um, this payload essentially will listen for a connection and then spawn a command shell. And if you wonder what a payload is, it's just a piece of software that's attached to and delivered by an exploit. And once um, it, it gets to the remote machine, it, it gives you full control after it has exploited that machine. So now we just got to run the exploit. As you can actually see, it has opened a command, a command shell um, on, a, on a remote 
on a remote machine. So we can try the staple commands to prove that we are actually indeed in a, in a metasploitable virtual machine by using commands such as who am I. Indeed, we've got the highest level of privilege and uh, by virtue of the fact that we are roots. So we find out what the host name is and the uh, internet configuration. And also, if you're interested about extracting um, the, the root encrypted password from uh, the shadow file, then you can just use this command. And there you have it. So you've got this uh, encrypted version of the passwords of the highest, uh, the, the, the highest, the highest user, the highest the user with the highest level of privilege in a, in a vulnerable machine, which is incredible because then you've got the keys to the kingdom and you can do anything you like. Uh, I hope that you've enjoyed this episode. Uh, if you have any question, then please stick it in the comments. Right, so let's close the session now. Right, and this tutorial is done, and um, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.